Hi everyone, my name is Eric Hayden Campbell. I'm a PhD candidate at Cornell University, advised by Nate Foster. And today I will tell you about Avenir, a tool developed with many academic and industry collaborators that manages data plane diversity via control plane synthesis. In a traditional network, a control plane runs a unified protocol that computes high level networking objectives, such as BGP routes. Then, vendor-provided abstraction code translates the routes into forwarding table entries in the data plane. For example, the one-stage pipeline in orange or the two-stage pipeline in beige, both of which implement the same forwarding rule. In this architecture, engineers are oblivious to the pipeline structure on individual routers. That is, the homogeneous control plane effectively abstracts over the diversity of pipelines in the data plane. Now, with the advent of software-defined networking, the data plane devices expose their implementation details directly to the controller. So the network engineers need to write down code to reason about the idiosyncrasies of each switch. These drivers translate controller-facing abstract operations on an abstract switch into target-specific operations on the target switch. For example, Let's say that we have a two-stage abstract pipeline where each table sets the output port based on the IP source or destination address, respectively. And we want to map operations on this pipeline to a target two-stage pipeline that first matches on both the source and destination addresses in the L2 table, and then sets a metadata field that is subsequently matched on in the aggregation table to determine the output port. Let's work through the driver code that translates rules in the source table. As an example, we'll insert a rule that sends traffic originating from source 10.0.1.0 out on port 88. First, we compute the metadata that is set in L2 and matched in AG. In this case, we mint an unused value 47, because there is no row in AG for port 88. Then, we insert into L2 a rule that wildcards the destination and matches on the source address from the abstract program. And finally, we insert a rule into AG that assigns the port to 88. Writing this code for this single table was pretty easy, but managing a collection of drivers quickly becomes tedious. For example, if we swap the order of match keys or store forwarding decisions in two metadata fields or in a single metadata field before making the final forwarding decision, each pipeline structure induces a slightly different driver with its own design, testing, and debugging costs. And there are many challenges in writing these translations in the real world. We've already seen that they're not pure functions on operations, but rather depend on the rules already installed, which requires careful state management. Real-world pipelines are also on a different scale than the simple examples we've seen, comprising dozens of tables, often with intricate dependencies between them. Real-world pipelines also offer more complex functionality. They do more than just L2, L3 forwarding, offering features like tunneling, access control, and load balancing. To say nothing of the engineering complexity, with programmable pipelines, the abstract and target programs may change arbitrarily whenever an engineer spots a bug or wants to make an optimization, which means that alongside the P4 program, engineers also have to co-maintain the drivers at a rapid iteration schedule. And even in the absence of a programmable data plane, fixed function switches are usually underspecified in lengthy English documents, forcing engineers to exert extensive effort to understand the switch behavior and then design, test, and debug the translation drivers. These considerations hinder the flexibility of data planes that real controllers can support. For example, in the open network operating system, ONOS, engineers wanted to support a new Broadcom switch, Cumern MX, but because of its subtle differences from the other switches ONOS already supported, it took the engineers two years to certify the driver as production ready. All of this is to say that SDN does not have the easy management of diverse hardware that was provided by traditional networks. To recover this, we want to develop an engine that supports automatic translation of control plane operations to reduce the redundant, error-prone, and burdensome code that engineers are required to write. And as secondary goals, we want our engine to be verified, to eliminate subtle bugs, and we want our engine to be efficient, to avoid prohibitive performance overheads. To this end, we've developed Avenir, which uses a technique called control plane synthesis to translate abstract operations on abstract pipelines to equivalent operations on the target pipeline in a fully automatic way. Simply pass formal descriptions of the abstract and target programs, and Avenir will automate the rest. Now, when people hear formal specification, they tend to panic because they imagine writing involved first-order logic specifications. However, 
Avenir uses well-studied PL techniques to compute efficient logical formulae from imperative data plane programs written in P4. Now, in the case of fixed function devices, Avenir is shifting the burden from writing a driver to writing a pipeline specification, and it's not clear if modeling pipelines is actually any easier than writing drivers. But using Avenir does provide the added benefit of formal verification, since a core part of the synthesis algorithm uses a theorem prover, Z3, to check that the target operations correctly implement the abstract operations. So what does the deployment of Avenir buy us? Avenir interposes between the controller and an individual data plane switch, hiding the specific details from the controller so that supporting a diverse data plane is automatic. To do this, Avenir employs a well-studied heuristic search algorithm called Counterexample Guided Inductive Synthesis, or SIGUS. Let's see how it works. First, the verification stage checks whether the abstract operation is already implemented on the target switch, which is not the case for the example rule from before. So the verification stage produces a counterexample that witnesses the behavioral discrepancy. In this case, identifying packets that have a source address that hit the newly added rule. This counterexample guides the heuristic search to create a candidate set of operations, which are passed to the verification stage. The algorithm continues searching until the heuristic search generates a correct sequence of candidate operations, which are then installed into the target switch. We prove two correctness theorems about this algorithm. First, we prove soundness, which says that if we compute a solution, it correctly realizes the abstract behavior, following classic results by Dijkstra from 1975. We also prove completeness, which says that if a solution exists, Avenir will eventually compute it. The proof here follows by the finiteness of the search space of all controller operations, which is really far too large to exhaustively explore. So we need to come up with good heuristics and optimizations to make Avenir scale in the common case. The first optimization is to make Avenir incremental. That is, it only processes a single operation at a time. The justification for this change is that controllers typically make incremental changes to the target. So we optimize our algorithm for this common case. Formally, we assume that the abstract and target behaviors are equivalent before each invocation of Avenir which means that any semantic change comes from the newly added rule, allowing us to slice away irrelevant rules, use static analysis to determine which target tables we should modify, and apply lots of other configurable domain-specific heuristics that you can read about in the paper. We also make use of abstracting caches to amortize the cost of our expensive search and verification algorithm. The first abstracting cache is a template cache that heuristically infers the structure from previous translations such as what tables or actions were used, and reproduces the mapping of keys and actions to produce a candidate solution that is passed to the standard algorithm from before. Recall the source table mapping example from before. The template cache optimistically copies the source and port values and mints a new metadata value to link the rows, which completely bypasses the heuristic search scheme. Similarly, the query cache universally quantifies over constants in valid queries. For example, when we conclude that a formula like x equals 5 or it doesn't is valid, we also check the validity of, for all b, x equals b or it doesn't. And if it is valid, we remember the formula in the query cache so that checking future formulae like x equals 47 or it doesn't becomes purely syntactic. And these two caches compose to provide a fast path that bypasses both the expensive search and expensive verification stages. But how well do these optimizations work? Can we support a broad range of programs efficiently? To demonstrate the flexibility of Avenir's algorithm, we retargeted a workload of 500 Ethernet, 500 IPv4, and one validation operation for a simple L2, L3, and validation pipeline to a collection of handwritten target pipelines. For example, the early validate pipeline is nearly the same as the abstract pipeline, except that it moves the validation table from the end of the pipeline to the start. The completion graph for this pipeline is shown on the left. The solid line indicates the completion time with cold caches, and the dotted line indicates the completion time with hot caches. There are a few things to notice. First, the cold cache line has a couple of horizontal hiatuses that represent cache misses when Avenir defaults to the standard algorithm, which explains why the hot cache line has no hiatuses. There are no cache misses. This pattern is repeated across a diverse set of targets, 
which lets us conclude that Avenir is able to retarget a single realistic pipeline to a variety of realistic targets, that caches amortize the cost of learning new translation schemes, and that network engineers who are worried about non-deterministic overheads can pre-populate the caches before deployment time. To assess the scalability of Avenir, we procedurally generated microbenchmarks to plot the synthesis time against the pipeline complexity. The details can be seen in the paper, but they show that Avenir seems to scale exponentially and is efficient on realistic program sizes. Now the caveat here is that these conclusions depend on the procedural generation scheme and the heuristics we developed. So we wanted to see how well Avenir works in a realistic scenario. To answer this question, we used data from a switch reboot load test used to benchmark ONOS. We used Avenir to translate 40,000 IPv6 routes expressed in the highest level flow objective API to a P4 model of a Broadcom switch. Observe in the completion graph on the left that Avenir takes just under 12 minutes to translate these 40,000 operations, and Onos completes its end-to-end -end benchmark in just about 15. Now even though we don't know the exact overhead that Avenir would instill into Onos, the takeaway here is that Avenir and Onos complete on the same order of magnitude. And that's all I have time to tell you. For more details, see our paper, which describes how Avenir interposes between the data plane and the controller to enable automatic, verified, and efficient management of a diverse data plane. Thank you.